learning objectives include what are lymphatics, why animals need lymphatics, what other functions lymphatics have. Transport system in the body include cardiovascular system and lymphatics. And cardiovascular system, as you know, composed of heart, blood, and blood vessels. While lymphatics, uh, these are channels. They have um, lymph in them. They're lymph vessels like blood vessels. And also lymph nodes that are houses of lymphocytes and macrophages. And then there are other lymphoid organs also we'll talk about with respect to the, these lymphatics. As you can see, that the heart pumps the blood to every single organ through the arteries, and then that blood comes back through the veins, draining them back into the heart, and then the heart pumps them again. So this cycle repeats itself over and over. And that basically sustains the life, provides nutrients to all cells of the body. But if you look closely, this is an amplified version of the lungs. These are lung tissue or lung cells that need nutrition, like oxygen, glucose, uh, other nutrients, vitamins, minerals, and all kinds of stuff. So blood basically uh, has all those ingredients that are needed for this, the cell nourishment. But it is important to know that Blood cells, like uh, RBCs, never leave blood vessels. The only cells that can leave uh, blood vessels, they are lymphocytes. I, I should say leukocytes. That include lymphocytes, monocytes, basophils, and those phagocytic cells are that are involved in the immunity of the body. But other than the cells... Uh, Proteins also leak sometimes. If there is, a, there is a tissue injury, for example, proteins also leak into the tissues, and these proteins, they exert on cardiac pressure or osmotic pressure, which draws or attracts water molecules. So if those proteins are retained in the, in the tissues, the end result would be swelling because water would accumulate in the tissues, and if those proteins are not drained, uh, it would result in a permanent swelling there, which would initiate pathological reactions. So the nature has provided a way back for these proteins that, are, that gets leaked from the injured blood vessels from time to time. So these proteins they can go through these lymphatic channels. So lymphatic channels essentially arise from the tissue spaces. As you can see, that this is the blood vessel going, and this is the tissue space, and then from the tissues, within the tissue itself, these uh, lymphatics originate. And they take up the proteins and even the water, that's the plasma that, that uh, leaks uh, through these pores of the, the capillaries, into the tissue spaces, and back to the heart. So fluid and proteins, along with all kinds of cells that include macrophages, lymphocytes, and all kinds of stuff, even bacteria, they are drained back to the heart. And we will see that lymphatics along their way have special structures called lymph nodes that filter out the lymph, which lymph basically is, is fluid, that is, uh, residing in the tissue spaces. So that extra fluid, which keeps accumulating otherwise, is drained through these lymphatics. And along with these lymphatics, other cells of the immune system also, along with the bacteria, go back into the circulations. But as soon as these microorganisms enter into special structures, like you see here, this is a lymph node. And lymph node is a house for macrophages, and lymphocytes. So those organisms are trapped in the lymph node. So lymph node basically is a kind of filter for these fluids. So they, they filter out those harmful microorganisms and make antibodies and make uh, the, the body immunity-wise stronger. What is the need of this uh, uh, transport system 
in the body. As you can see, that mammals, like human, like animals, they are multicellular organisms. And nutrition is not available immediately to the cells. Like, for example, if I'm sitting in a bath, uh, a water bath, and water has all the ingredients, my skin is not able to absorb all those uh, nutrients through the skin that they, they can reach my liver or cells of my intestine. So this is the only way that blood circulatory system enables uh, these nutrients to reach to individual cells. And that is the reason a transport system has to be there. But the problem with the transport system is the proteins. So once they leak out, they exert osmotic pressure and results in swelling. To deal with that problem, lymphatics are there. And they drain those extra proteins and extra cells and all that material back to the heart. So physiologically, both systems deliver nutrients to the cells and carry away waste from the cells. Although uh, sometimes the body uh, ends up with microbial infections and those microbes, they also use these uh, blood system as well as lymphatics as a vehicle for spreading themselves in the body. And that is the reason that lymphatics on their way have those filters called lymph nodes and other lymphoid structures, which include, like even in the bone marrow, there are, there are cells that specially deal with the microorganisms if they reach there in the bone marrow. Similarly, we, we talked about lymph nodes. Spleen is another lymphoid organ, which basically filters blood, like lymph nodes filter lymph. Spleen filters blood. Tonsils, everybody knows what tonsils are. They're lymphoid organs. Thymus is a special lymphoid organ that basically makes all T cells. Mucosa associated lymphoid organs, uh, lymphoid cells or lymphoid structures are present all along our tubular organs like our intestines, like our respiratory system, urogenital system. There are lymphoid aggregations under the mucosa. And in birds, there is a special structure called uh, bursa fibricius. Uh, this is a small structure close to the cloaca, which makes B lymphocytes. Like in mammals, B lymphocytes are made by the bone marrow. But in birds, it is the bursa fibricius, special organ. Well, immunity is important uh, in these two systems, cardiovascular as well as lymphatic systems. And you can see that these two systems have uh, uh, cells of the immune system, like uh, phag there are phagocytic cells that include neutrophils, eosinophils, monocytes, and they're present in blood vascular system as well as uh, in the lymphatic system. Then complement system is another big uh, system of proteins that are present in the blood vascular system as well as in other body fluids. C-reactive proteins, these are very special proteins. They're released uh, uh, in response to inflammation. They're released by the, the liver, present in the blood circulatory system. But once they're there in the fluid, they can go any place because blood circulates all over the body. Then antibodies are secreted by B lymphocytes. Uh, they're released by B lymphocytes. Uh, they're made uh, in the lymph nodes, in the other lymphoid organs that we talked earlier. But once they're released, they are also fluid-borne. So they get in, once they get into the circulatory system, they can, these antibodies can go any place. T cells, they are also in the circulation, the uh, blood vascular circulation as well as the lymphatics. T cells are special. You should remember that lymph, uh, the, the, uh, the antibodies, they are bigger molecules. They cannot penetrate the cell. So if a cell is infected with a virus, for example, which we know that virus... Uh, replicate uh, or multiply uh, inside the cell. So once the virus is multiplying inside the cells, there may be th uh, tons of antibodies in the body, but they're not any of any use. T lymphocytes, T cells, they are the one that kill that or can kill the organism uh, inside the cell. So basically what they do, they also kill the cell. Uh, this is called cellular immunity. So all these components are very important integral part of the immunity, and they are present in both these transport systems. So in summary, lymphatics drain basically those proteins that leak out of the blood vascular system, and 
also, there is a continuous circulation of these lymphocytes and various other cells of the immune system. Lymphatics filter the lymph. Spleen filters the blood. Thank you.